Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to a bit more Kerbal Space Program. Now, if you check my bank balance, it's at 50 grand. I've spent a little bit of money. <laughs> I've just recorded a few episodes of me pottering about and working things out and not really getting anywhere. And I sort of came to a, a bit of a realization that while I have a bit of, a, you know, well, definitely a lot of an engineering background myself, nothing to do with uh, orbital mechanics as far as space flight or anything that goes. And I sort of thought to myself, what I'm doing while applying sound engineering fundamentals to engineering problems is cool, and I can do that in something like Stationeers, I'm sort of almost trying to guess the principles and the basic fundamentals of, of uh, rocketry, and, uh, and I don't understand them. So I've been Googling and I've had a bit of a look, and it'd be like trying to guess what, what gravity is without understanding the basics. So I've done and schooled myself on some concepts, basically on the idea of prograde and apoapsis and, and, and all these sort of little things. And I think I've got a little bit of a better idea. I can show you what I was building earlier to show the, that I was going in the opposite direction. I was building a bloody, uh, like, go rockets, essentially, like this, this monster of a thing, right? And then I've sort of realized that it's not about thrust. It's actually about fuel efficiency on the other side of it. And um, I don't... Uh, I haven't been using liquid fuel engines for the pure fact, the same reason I've attached boosters to things in the past, and we've discussed this as well, because uh, I just didn't really think too hard about it, because I, I made a few assumptions. So what I'm going to do is, can I make a new one? I can just go new. Okay, cool. Symmetry radial. Okay. Um, I've got some ideas. Um, I've watched some things, but I haven't tried them, right? We don't have a lot of money, so we're probably gonna have to go back to doing contracts soon. But this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a bit of a red hot go. But yeah, I just sort of, it's fun experimenting up to a point, but it, uh, you know, I guess it'd be like trying to solve a math problem, but not understanding the concept of, say, addition. That's probably the, the sort of best analogy I can think of. Like, you can, you can guess and apply problem solving, but it's, it was almost like a language barrier that I didn't really understand. So, look, we're going to do what I like to do for uh, the sort of parachutes. Um, or a flag. That's cool. Drogue shoot or drag shoot or whatever it's called. We'll pop them there. You know how I, how I like to do it. Let's get a bit of symmetry going, right? And we'll put a nose parachute on there. And we will put a coupler. Now, not that, like, I mean, I'm assuming my audience, it's not a lot of you are trying to learn from me, which is probably a bloody great idea. You learn not what to do. But a lot of you are probably already familiar with this and you're getting a kick out of watching it. Or maybe you're just sort of enjoying the journey of watching me figure it out, right? But we don't want to stagnate and do 10 episodes of me trying to throw stuff against the wall when, uh, you know, I don't know where the wall is. So what I think... Uh, the other thing I looked into, apparently in this, at least in this game, a few statistics. Uh, I'd love to find where they're more readily available because I'd rather not go to external wikis. And I, I like a game being self-contained. I don't think that's a hard thing to ask. Um, apparently, it's at 70 kilometers is where you're technically sort of in orbit or, or in space, sorry. So then you're facing and all that. There's no wind resistance at 70 kilometers. So that's sort of when you can start making maneuvers. And... Um, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, wind resistance. Apparently around about 300 meters per second, you're going to start running into some trouble there as well, as far as like efficiencies and all that go. So anyway, what I want to do is couple that on. I might as well make these stages as I go. We'll put that there, that there, cool. And we're going to want a liquid fuel engine, and we're probably going to want a fair bit of liquid fuel. Um, what I might do is... I'll do this for starters, right? This is the concept float. Like I said, I haven't really looked into it too much. I, I Thrust is vacuum, and I came to see that ASL is at sea level, right? So, so 240 in a vacuum and 215. So this thing is probably better for our sort of space maneuvers. So that's what that's, that's, what that's gonna be. So here's my concept working backwards. We're at 70 kilometers uh, above, you know, up, 
um, or 70,000 meters or whatever you'd like to call it. And at that point, um, I'm essentially going to try and turn it into an orbit by, uh, like, making my, uh, my sort of, I, I suppose, from what I understand, I just need to put power into the prograde, potentially, uh, and try and keep the apoapsis from shifting, and that way we're essentially almost adding, like, string to the circle of the, uh, of the circumference of the orbit. That's sort of how my brain's considering it. I don't know if this will be enough fuel, but that'll get the ball rolling. Um, we're going to call this... Um, what, what could we call this? What naming conventions... Oh, you know what? Let's call it, like, the Scarlet Sun. One. That'll do, right? Um... All right, so we'll do that. Uh, I haven't really used liquid fuel for for getting out. Uh, it's interesting. I sort of came to realize. I think I was I was watching um, Quill. Who I, I I didn't even realize he was into Kerbal, but it must have been a few years ago. But um, is that the right size one? Yeah. But essentially, uh, yeah, he, he was all talking all about fuel efficiency and boosters and thrust. It's sort of like. As long as you've got enough thrust to just go, you don't really need to... Like, the boosters will give you a bit of quick acceleration. So, arguably, having a little bit of a boost at the beginning of the flight makes some sense. And I, I mean, I, I guess I can get around that. But having a variable throttle all the way through, which is essentially what a liquid fuel engine gives me, is, uh, is inescapably fantastic. So... Thrust at sea level is 167 and 205. Oh, it's just an all-round more powerful engine, right? So, I might even put some more fuel onto that. So, I'm thinking we'll do... I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's enough to get us up there. I have no idea. But the the thrust that you get from these... Oh yeah, it's much of a muchness, I guess. Quick little burn to get us started. I might I might put a flea on there as well. Because that's the other thing as well, like, so if you do a liquid fuel engine, you're, you're potentially carrying a lot of baggage. At least with these, you can have them disconnect or something like that. But like, I know we're sort of going back to the drawing board a little bit, but to be perfectly honest, it's like my experimentation taught me enough to realize that I'm, I'm off the target fundamentally, but I don't think I would have been able to make that realization without throwing spaghetti at the wall for a bit first. You know, sometimes you got to let someone figure it out. Anyway, we'll give this a go. We'll give this a bit of a go. Um, so this will be like, we'll boost then we'll decouple, and I guess we could stage them together to be perfectly honest. Decouple, and then this will be our main flight thing. Now I'm presuming this is way too small to really get anything done, but that's not the end of the world, right? And then we'd have our decouple, and I suppose, you know, we can, we can stage them together. Yeah, 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 decouple and stage, right? And then this would be for re-entry, decouple, and then those, yeah. So we'll give that a go. It's a basic design. This is my first time really playing with the liquid fuel, but I understand. Um, I also understand that you want to sort of probably face or move east um, because we're equatorial. Our base is right on the equator. And at least if you're going east, you're sort of going, I believe, with the rotation of the planet. Uh, otherwise, north and south I wouldn't really matter that much, but going west, you'd have to overcome the rotation. So we'll get essentially a relative gravitational boost. And again, I'm not an authority on this. This is just my sort of learnings. Um, again, I don't want to look up full tutorials whole cloth because it's the same thing as like copying off the, kid, the other kid in math class. Like that might be all good and well to get you past math, but say you want to be an engineer, that's not going to do you any jo any justice. So you need to learn, and uh, so I'm trying to get myself to learn as much as possible. Anyway, so I'm going to launch it like this. It's a generally safe system. I, I'm not super confident it's going to get us all the way up there, but we'll give it a go. 
we'll give it a, a, a go so now I don't really I guess we're facing technically we're facing south is that what's going on there hmm All right, well, we'll turn on SAS and I'll start trying to get it to turn to east when we get a chance maybe I'll maybe I'll just get let the booster do its thing first All right. Oh, east's the other way. Okay, so we'll let the booster just boost. Booster gonna boost. Right, and then... Oh, jeez, I probably should have throttled up better. I guess... I guess we'll just throttle all the way to... I think that's east. Never eat... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get it up to, like, 300. Oh, okay, perfect. So we're starting to get that sort of resistance. Okay, um, that's cool. Let's just uh, see what's going on up here. I mean, obviously, we've got a long way to sort of go still. Oh, we're definitely going kind of straight up. Oh, I've run out already. Jesus. Okay, so... Oh, it held the same amount of throttle. That's cool. So that's interesting, there's my sort of... So that's my prograde, which is sort of my velocity vector, right? Apoapsis needs to go up more. Definitely needs to go up way more. So say we angle back up like that, we'll aim for that. We're slowing down a little bit, but we're... Oh, but, okay, so we've reached the peak of it. That's not good. Hang on, we don't want that. Can I... Can I change that by going up? I can! Uh, oh, no, no. No, I have definitely swung past it now. Have I? Oh, now I'm just getting confused. Okay, cool. Right, right, okay. Oh. Now we're going back up again? Oh, now I'm really confused. I've definitely done something interesting here. Okay, so ultimately I would want to get this this apoapsis up higher to like 70 kilometers, which would be technically in space, right? And then if we were to hit the, yeah, see at the moment, like our velocity vector or prograde or whatever you want to call it, that's, I see it in vectors. That's all I see is vectors. Now we're going past it, but you could see it was sort of at right angles to the planet, straight across this sort of line. So my thinking is we hit 70,000, right? And um, and then at that point we sort of go at right angles, and then we just we just make it wider. We you know make it bigger. I don't know what the terminology is. Anyway, so an interesting start. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I get the increased efficiency of going east, you know, or going at the angle sort of thing. But, um, 
I'm kind of all right with uh, going relatively straight up as well. So let's just bring this back down. It wasn't a bad first run. Um... Yeah, so I figure it makes sense to me that if I can hit that 300 meters per second, like ASAP, right? And then use the liquid fuel to maintain that, that sort of works for my thought process, I think. So maybe we go kind of straight up on that booster. I'll add some more fuel. I think we need to add some more fuel to our ship. Um, but yeah, the, the the ability to use that variable, that variable throttle, or well, I guess I can just say throttle, um, that's going to make a, that's going to be a big help towards trying to sort of maintain that, that sort of optimal speed, I guess. I mean, it could be an arbitrary number, but as long as it makes sense to just pick one and stick to it. How much money did that actually cost me? Like, it's, that's probably a pretty cheap rocket in the scheme of things. Though we are using fuel. Five grand? Yeah, okay, so we can't do this too many more times, you know? What I might do is... Um, oh, okay, you can see the mark. I'm going to add a big old chunk of fuel there, right? The, the ship should have still remained the same overall, okay? But obviously that's going to add a lot more weight. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll give that a go. We'll call that the Scarlet Sun 2, I suppose. And um, we'll go for that. And I'm curious I'm curious how, how this original thruster goes for us as well. Because, yeah, I like the idea of conceptually using that to get us to X speed and then just ride X speed all the way up into, into bloody space. Um, what I might even do is watch, we'll go straight up and watch the map, the apoapsis in there, and we'll, um, I'll see if I can force it to 70 and then maybe start angling off once it's predicted to be 70. Yeah, that actually sounds really good in my mind. Hmm. We'll just see how we go. Wow, that barely gets us moving, hey. So we probably want... May, maybe put a bigger booster on it or something like that, just to get that... that start going. Yeah, let's go. Let's go 300. Alright, cool. 300-ish, I guess it's all... Yeah, much of a muchness. Alright, so what's this apoapsis looking like? It's growing. It's definitely growing. Yeah, so the prograde there is my relative. That's what that green line is, I believe, as well. Now, the problem is we're now we're approaching the apoapsis faster. That's not good. But I could move, I could change my vector. Oh. There we go. It's doing some crazy stuff. I 
Am I going back to front? Maybe? That's why that... Oh, maybe I am going back to front. Which way is north? Maybe I should try steering it in the other direction next time. Alright, so we're sort of embiggening it now, right? I don't know what else to call it. But it's not high enough. Right, so I need I need to like go straight up. Oh that's sort of working. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of it now. I mean, obviously we're in the wrong stage. Yeah, I'm going to have no fuel for... Yeah, am I going the wrong way? Yeah, I might be going the wrong way. I get confused, What's you know, with, with North and all that. The way that this sort of compass thing works. All right, but conceptually, I'm grasping this a lot better than I was previously, right? Turn off SAS. No, right, we'll try and go the other way next time, see what happens there. Yeah, because it's like my orbit flips or something. It's very strange. Yeah, I think we'll just go straight up. As much as people seem to think going with... I understand the concept of going with the curve to, to be a bit more efficient. I do. But at the moment, I'm still I'm still trying to realise um, the general concept. We'll get there. Like, efficiency and all that aside, if I can get this thing to get to a point where the old apoapsis is at 70,000, then we're laughing as far as the height thing. And at that point, I essentially just have to have enough fuel to work the sort of prograde, I, I suppose. Right? And then that's why you would want as little weight as possible when you're in that stage because weight is the only thing that, you know, you obviously have to impart energy to move it, but there's no there's no wind resistance or anything like that, so it's literally the weight. So the lighter, the, the, the multiplicative value comparatively during uh, to doing, like, say, air travel and stuff with wind resistances will be huge. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to just go straight up. Efficiency and all that crap be damned. Um, I'm going to put a big boy booster on that. Yeah, I mean, stuff it. I could I could put a bloody thumper on it. Why not? Let's just put a thumper on it. That'll get me to 300, no question about that. Right, and then we'll put another bloody fuel tank on it. Big old ticking bomb, this thing. 
right? Scarlet Sun 3. Look, that might be overkill, but whatever. You know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Boom. 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 We're kind of assuming that's going to be enough fuel to do my maneuvers. But, uh... I don't know. Let's worry about to get into 70,000 first, you know? At the very least, maybe I'll have leftover fuel here. Who knows? We'll see. Launch. But I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure this is the, the right path that I'm on now, conceptually. Okay, sass, let's go. Oh, it's doing all right. It's working out quite well, actually. Yeah, so obviously, so we'll start to develop a loop, and that's purely because of the rotation. Yeah, I think we were going the wrong way. Oh, this should ho ho hopefully make a big difference. Wow, okay, this boost has worked out perfectly, actually. We're going to throttle up because we're going to need it when this happens. I can see what they're talking about. It's when you get those sort of visual... Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, close enough there. Cool. Okay. Yeah, this is exciting. This is very exciting. Yeah, I just... This thing scrambles my head with its headings and all that sort of... Oh, man. Nah. Oh, let's slow down. So, yeah, this variable throttle... Why wasn't I doing this from the beginning? I was just assuming you need big old boosters because I've seen a few movies. I might just pop it under 300. Right, as long as I keep burning, that should just keep going. Right? Like, I sometimes I wonder, like, am I closing the gap on this apoapsis? But I don't think I am. I think I'm perpetually pushing it further up. That's the one thing I don't get. Like, what if I get too close to it or something? Okay, it's saying orbit. Oh, okay, so there's... All right, so technically... Okay, so that's my prograde there. Hang on, if I'm in orbit... No, no, I still am technically in atmosphere. Okay. Okay, I think it's happening. Okay, so it's past 70, right?
Visago throttle zero. Okay, that starts slowing down. Oh no, that's no. Alright, but I think I kind of want to do this, right? Oh shit, no, no, no. Go baby, go. I don't have enough fuel. Ah, oh. <laughs> that was working. That was working a hundred percent. That's how it works. Oh, so good. Okay, cool. Oh man. All right. That's hey. That's that's a bit of a success story in and of itself. Look at that. Geez, you have to put a lot of energy into into that. Okay, so like I said, it makes more sense now why why people want you sort of to go at an angle when you do your ascent. We were definitely heading in the wrong direction because I guess the camera doesn't let you go. Like it limits you, so that must be north, which throws me. So why, why on earth does this line here have an N on it? Do you know what I mean? Blows my mind. The compass, as I understand it, is upside down. Anyway, whatever. It might be some concept that I just don't get. And that's fine. Okay, cool. Let's bring uh, old Jeb safe back home. He's having a great time spinning around like that. It's amazing what uh, understanding a few basic concepts can do for you. I don't think there's any harm releasing those shoots that early. We'll wait for them to take, see while they're yellow. Once they turn green, we'll stage that. Cool, that was much better, I think. So we obviously need a bit more fuel in that final sort of stage to really to really get it going. Yeah, that's the that's so interesting. Because, yeah, like, I guess you have to, like, because all velocity and all that's relative. Like, so I was blasting that thing up to, like, a velocity of uh, 100 meters per second or whatever. But it's not like it's getting decelerated. You know what I mean? I'm, th I'm starting to think in terms of sort of, I guess, acceleration and all that. But that's not at all what, what it's going to be like in the sort of end state. You need to get it to... A velocity. I, now, I'm not worrying about how its relationship is with the gravity curvature. It must be sort of tumbling forever. But like once you're in that sort of orbit, it is a it's a constant. Essentially, there is a velocity vector that is constant as opposed to accelerating. So you really have to you have to just blast it up to speed. And because I went straight up when I decided to essentially go at right angles and speed into it, that's why it required so much energy and fuel and all that sort of stuff. So I get now why you need to potentially go at an angle, but you can't go at too steep an angle because you still need to get up to the top. But the thing is, like, as much as I get scared of catching the apiosis or apoapsis or whatever it is, um, I guess as long as I'm always imparting upward velocity... Like, I don't think it's predicting with my fuel supply. 
It's predicting on my current velocity, my velocity. And as long as I have positive velocity upwards, i.e. the gravity and general acceleration wind resistance is not outdoing me, then I should never technically catch the apoapsis. Even though I'm getting scared that I will, when I think about it like that, as long as I have fuel in the tank and I'm imparting upward thrust, even if I'm at an angle to get that acceleration around the the uh, equator, I mean, shit, I could probably do it at a really shallow angle as long as I have a velocity vector that's still going upwards away and, I, and that relative velocity to the planet is still... Uh, above zero, I suppose. Food for thought. But anyway, that's what I call progress, team. So that's fantastic. I'm very happy. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we might just leave it there for the time being. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.